So the time has finally come where I can tell you how I've finished installing my own utility kitchen. And I know it was over a series of videos. It wasn't the quickest of jobs because I had to film it. I had life going on as well. Luckily, there wasn't a matter of urgency because I've got a main kitchen just behind here. But I'm really proud of what I've achieved because this time last year, I never thought I would have been able to do it. So it really is amazing what you can achieve when you push your limits, you look on YouTube for tips and tricks, and this isn't unachievable at all. So uh, yeah, if you wanna see how I finished it off, then keep on watching, but if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe as well if you wanna see more. So the first thing I had to work on was covering this boarded up area, but I'd already cut some strips of wood with my circular saw to fit either side, and notice I left it a few mil shy so I could add some filler after. Also, I didn't go right to the very top because we were gonna have the air comp completely replaced and these pipes were in the way anyway. And I'm just keying the wooden pieces, including the melamine wood with sandpaper so things should adhere better. And wipe down with a cloth and mix some PVA solution and brush it over all of the wood, including behind the tap because I showed you how I tiled that a couple of weeks ago. And once that had completely dried, it was time to mix some filler. I'm using Easy Fill 20, recommended by a lot of people online. And takeaway Tupperware tubs are extremely useful. I just mixed a batch of it here and covered the wooden strips that I'd added. So I just patched it up with a filling knife and then use a trowel to even it out. So after doing that to both sides, I left it to dry and came back and sanded it down with fine sandpaper. Then something my father-in-law recommended was to use some corner tape so I'm measuring the length that I need, and this is what it looks like. It's two metal strips attached to some paper, and it folds exactly in half. So I'm cutting it down with some very sharp scissors, otherwise you'll need some tin snippers. And then folded it and held it against it to see if it fit. I rather like this invention. So once I knew it fit, I removed it, brushed over it with more PVA solution and left it to dry, and then going over it with some more filler, followed by adding the corner tape back again. And I'm pressing down either side with a filling knife, going downwards, squeezing as much filler out as I can while trapping it into place. And then I repeated exactly the same for the opposite side as well. Then you could directly skim over it, but I put just a little bit and left it to dry and came back to it after I'd tiled the bottom area. So as I've already shown you how I tiled my splashback area a few weeks back, if you haven't caught up with that, I'll leave a video link below. Right, so now we're on to having the aircon completely changed. Now this unit is about four years old, but it was fitted by the handyman that did a few jobs for us when we moved in. And it worked for about six months, so I had to get an aircon engineer out, who not only told me it was the worst job he'd ever seen, he'd tested it and there were no gas in it whatsoever, and apparently it all leaked out of the pipes and they hadn't been connected properly. So we decided to hire Mark from Ambassador Air. Thank you for everyone's recommendations on Facebook, by the way. It turns out that someone that I knew on YouTube had a brother who was an aircon engineer. And I've been ringing around for the last two years trying to find someone who would come to look at it. And aircon engineers are few and far between. I know some people will probably say, why couldn't you have done this yourself? It's actually against the law in the UK if you're not gas registered. So having seen somebody fit it wrong, I wasn't gonna to be touching this at all. And on goes the new Toshiba. And because I wanted it in the center of the room, he advised me that we'd need a pump. So it would pump any condensation straight outside. Now Mark is based in Redditch, so the chances are probably gonna be slim that he's near to you, but I'll leave his company details below. This isn't sponsored, but we found him very affordable and the external unit went in exactly the same place as the last one and he also pressure tested it to see if everything was fine. But although we haven't reached the height of summer yet, so far it's drastically cut down the heat. And with the pipes going all along the top of the window in some conduit, I hadn't actually finished the wall behind it myself until I knew what was left over and needed touching up. So I'm extremely happy that I can use this room again. So he tidies up after himself. <laughs> I wouldn't worry too much about that, to be honest. I'm gonna make a, a lot more mess over the next few days. 
And now I'm on to a new day. And something that was bugging me was seeing raw tiles underneath the lip of this windowsill because the windowsill was too shallow. So I'm measuring the width of it. And the only thing that I found suitable for the job was this 90 degree hollow trim from Eurocell. And I decided I could cut the same thing up just to cover behind the conduit. So I've measured and clamped it to my sawhorse and using a mitre cutting box, I'm cutting with a fine tooth handsaw and trimming off a little bit at the top back first because it stuck out too much. And for the lip, I'm using a speed square and drawing along some masking tape. And because it's hollow, I wanted to go over it with silicon before I put it in place and smoothed over it with a credit card. But although I didn't get it on film, I also did the sides as well. And after cutting the trim for the top piece, I pushed it up ever so slightly to use some grab adhesive. The reason it's held in place is because it's tucked above either side. But because it was sagging, I cut some scrap pieces of wood to about 20 mil or something and trapped them between the top of the window and the trim so they'd stay in place while the glue set. And once the silicon on the windowsill bit had dried, I applied a row of lines with silicon, which this one is also an adhesive, and this apparently would give it extra strength when I put it in situ. And I just pushed that into place. As usual, I'll leave all the links to things I'm using below. So now onto my snagging list, which is always tedious. And you might notice the walls are white now because I asked my husband to paint everything so I could see if any floors were visible. I find this a much quicker method than just diving in and filling everything that you see. So I'm brushing over it with more PVA solution left it to dry but this time I'm going over it with some Wix instant skim in a tub that I had a couple of years ago. Thankfully it hadn't gone off and I'd apply it, go over it with a vinyl smoother. Once it's dried it's one of the easiest things to sand down and any slight dips or anything you could always fill the imperfections the next day because there's a lot less by then. So now on to painting, and I'm using Dulux's Easy Care range in the colour Chic Shadow. And I cut around all the tricky bits first, and then went over it with a large roller. Oh, and it's bliss, painting directly underneath an aircon unit. And once everything had dried, it was time to do all the finishing bits like the silicon and the cork. So you know my favourite trick? I'm going over with white silicon, spraying it with some washing up liquid solution, and removing the excess with a credit card. Nice and simple. And I found some Manhattan Grey from Screwfix and that was perfect for this silver grey trim and the chic shadow paint. And then repeated that for the opposite side and that made sure my tile splashback area was completely waterproof. So as you can probably tell, I am so happy with how things turned out. But if you really wanna know about the pricing, I've got a list here. We had a few bits like the tile cutters and things like that in, but I'll give you a bit of a breakdown. The units we bought from Wix, the kitchen carcasses, that was about 200 pounds for the basic ones. We didn't go for integrated pieces because I just thought it was easier. The sink was about 50, 60 quid from Wix again actually, but it was an Astrocast one. The worktops I bought from Selco and they were about £70 each. A lot of people didn't really like the idea of fake marble, but again, this is an investment piece for food photography, so really it's for backdrops. The tiling, I already had the tiles from home base from a couple of years ago, left over from our main kitchen, and all the tile supplies were about 30 quid. These metro tiles, they're £6 for a box of 25, so I think they're really affordable. For the paint, I just used a 20 quid Dulux Easy Care washable paint. The upstand, again from Selco, that was 26 pounds. I thought that was quite dear, but we needed that to hide the fact that the windowsill was lower than the, the worktop. And the plumbing for the speed bit bits, that was about 100 pounds. The tap was 40 quid off Amazon. And I get that to about £610. So that's just to give you an idea of 
what it would cost you. And generally I've just tried to go for something that's affordable but ticks all of my boxes. So uh, yeah, anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because hopefully in the next few weeks, I really need to sort out a recycling station because it's a mess behind the camera right now. And over maybe next week, I'm hoping to build a radiator cover and start working in the living room. I want a filing cabinet because I've got my office station here and that's just a mess. Anyway, I'll see you hopefully next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.